Jimmy Butler was back at Timberwolves practice Wednesday, and uh, among reports of targeting his emotions at coach Tom Thibodeau, Carl Anthony Towns, and Andrew Wiggins, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted this. At one point in a scrimmage, sources said, Butler turned to GM Scott Layden and screamed, you need me, you can't win without me. Butler left teammates and coaches largely speechless. He dominated the gym in every way Jimmy's back. Well, fortunately, Rachel Nichols was there for an interview with Butler and asked him about his situation with the Timberwolves. Should people think because you are back in practice that this is fixed or it's on its way to being fixed? Uh, I think people think that. I think people think that. I would think that too. It's not. It's not fixed. Let's just be honest. It's, it's not fixed. Um, is it fixable? It could be. It could be. But uh, do I think so? No. Because you got to be honest. You have, I'm being honest. Do I think so? No. I'm being honest with you. Mm -hmm. But is everybody going to be honest? No. No. Everybody's not going to be honest. Like if you go and say, which one of y'all told what Jimmy said today in practice? Everybody, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, be honest. I don't care. There ain't nothing mm -hmm. we can do about it now. But mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. That's it. I just want everybody to be happy. I want to win. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I go about it the wrong way. I really do apologize. And Rachel mm -hmm. tweeted following the interview that she had gotten the call Tuesday night that Jimmy was ready to talk. She hopped on a plane on Wednesday morning. Dennis, this mm -hmm. does not reflect well on anyone in this organization. How do you fix this at this point? Well, listen to Jimmy, if you're honest, if everyone steps to the table and, and really flushes out how they really feel, how they got to this situation. So is it a disagreement with he and Tibbs? Is it a disagreement with him and Cat or Wiggs? Who is it really the disagreement really with? So when that honesty comes out, maybe you can fix it. But the way things are seeming and the way you go about your business, Jimmy, I'm a little disappointed. You worked your butt off to become an all-star and become one of the most respected two-way guys in our game. So I would think at this point in your career, you would take a page maybe out of Kyrie's book and go behind closed door and have a great conversation with Tibbs and management and, and GM Layden and say, you know what, I'm not happy here. Maybe I don't fit with this young core. Maybe I should move on. Now people are looking at you as a savvy veteran handling your business the right way versus being demonstrative in practice. Now it doesn't look good. So did Jimmy gain or lose leverage after that performance in practice? Well, after listening to that now again, Chris, maybe losing some leverage at home, but then at the end of the day, he can walk the way his contract is set up. So they have to try to fix something or then the T-Wolves have to make a drastic decision and say, who has the best offer for us? We just gave uh, Car Anthony Towns 190. We just gave Wiggs, I think, 153 or whatever that was a few years ago. So we've invested in this, these two young guys. So now if we brought in a veteran, he doesn't fit with us, yes. He came in to be that veteran and give be the heart and soul of the team. Yes, it's been said that we know Wiggins may, I mean, excuse me, Towns may be the most talented, right? Wiggs may be the most gifted, but he was the heart and soul to help those guys go deep into the playoffs and be a better team. It's not working, so now Scott Layden has to make a tough decision. So if conflict resolution is off the table, where's the best fit for Jimmy? Right now, I thought two weeks ago we had this conversation, I thought uh, Miami would be the perfect fit. Pat Riley, Coach Brochure, they are strong enough minds to be, Jimmy, you're not going to work out, you're not going to act right, you be the monster in our practice, we're going to kick your butt out of here. You're not going to act that way around Pat Riley and, Scott, and, and excuse me, Coach Brochure. So I thought Miami would be the best fit. And you still think so? Still think so today, but Chris, you've been around this game long enough now. You've seen crazier <laughs> things happen. So I say Miami, but I, do, I wouldn't be surprised if another team stepped in and tried to get involved. Well, after the break, the preseason highlights continue. It's an eight-game Wednesday night in the NBA, and we've got a game winner from Trey. Don't go away. Ooh, that was deep. All this week, the starters have been answering the 50 burning questions about the upcoming season. Thursday at 5.30 Eastern, they'll discuss the player with the most to prove this season. Kawhi, Markel, Blake, Mello, don't miss it on NBA TV. The highlights continue with the sixth year of the NBA Canada Series. Wednesday, the Brooklyn Nets took on the Toronto Raptors in Montreal. And Kawhi doing it all for Toronto, DZ. Well, that's one of the things that Raptor fans are excited about. Yes, you lose Double D, 
who was right in the community. But Kawhi Leonard is proven, now healthy, put the ball on the floor, share a little bit, get to where everyone's on the floor. And can you finish? Yes, you can. Inside and out. This time, yet again, off the screen, driving to the lane, finishing with the layup. That would cut their deficit at that point. But D'Angelo Russell in the second quarter gets the handoff, knocks down the three. Okay, is there ice water in your veins tonight, nice D-Lo? Huh? Maybe chilling. Hey, maybe Pun chilling intended. tonight. <laughs> well, during the preseason. Oh my right? goodness, young fella. Jared Allen. The strong two-hand dunk plus the foul. He'd make that free throw. The Nets would lead the way 59 to 56 at the half. Gary Payton receiving a Montreal Canadiens jersey. Ah, uh, GP, are you with me? The Hall of Famer. Then Kawhi still making an impact mm. in the second oh, half. The glove with the steal. But then he misses the dunk, and then uh, Danny said, I'll clean it up for you. Not bad, right? <laughs> this time, the layup plus the foul. I heard a tweet. Yeah, get him an extra one there. I heard a tweet. Get him an extra one. Oh, he's feeling he's feeling good now. Uh, but Ananobi's oh. there for the slam. That would put the Raptors up 102 to 73. Hmm. Now, the Raptors went on to beat the Nets 118 to 91. They scored 35 points in the third quarter alone. It was the first time this preseason that Kyle Lowry or Kawhi Leonard saw any second half action. Kyle, though, was thrown out in the third quarter. But how do you see Kawhi fitting in with this team? First of all, Kyle, chill out a little bit. It's just preseason. Don't get He's thrown excited. out of it. You and Steve Curry the other night getting thrown out in preseason. Relax, He's also guys. excited. You know what I mean? Get excited. Yeah. Now, to your point. Kawhi, I think now, so far, he's shown us he's healthy. Now he's starting to get into his groove. He's starting to feel Coach Nick Nurse, who's a rookie head coach now, moving up. I like his demeanor in the situations he's putting Kawhi in it. Let's face it, he's taking a page out of the Spurs. A lot of pick and rolls, a few isos in the wing. That's where Kawhi has thrived the last few years in the Spurs system. So I take my hat off to Nick Nurse saying, you know what? I'm not going to mess myself up. Let me put Kawhi in those areas that he feels comfortable so he can thrive. Now he's scoring, getting to the free throw line, and now making his players better around him. Certainly Off to a great start. to be thriving. Yes. I love yes. that you've brought that word out during the preseason. And across the street, I, I mean literally across <laughs> the street, at Georgia Tech, the Atlanta Hawks hosted the San Antonio Spurs. Now, DeMar DeRozan. Yes, double D's will be yes. called. Mr. That, mid range. Look at that. I'll, Mr. Mid range. I'll let you call him that. Yeah, I call him double D. <laughs> <laughs> A poster alert, though. Here, Alex. Oh! Smith. Oh, pow, yes. Throws it down over Pau Gasol. Ooh. Yeah, your hips won't be hurting in the morning, but <laughs> that poster looked fine. Rudy Gay, though, playing well for the Spurs. Double D driving it. See, I can't pull it off. Yeah, you can pull it off. Sound nice. Double D to Rudy Gay. Splash for three. Let's see. There you that go. was the long two, long but this two, time, I'm sorry, long the two. step back for three. Okay, there Finish we go. With he finished with 22 points and seven assists in this one. Check out Bob Rathbun's call. <laughs> from the G in Georgia Tech. So in the Hawks' three-point win over the Spurs, the rookie dropped 22 in 31 minutes. Here's what he had to say after his game winner. Straight 22 points, seven assists, <laughs> and some ice water. <laughs> you, knew, you had to know that was coming, right? Yeah, I knew that was coming. Oh, that was cold. It is cold, yeah. Take me through, how were you able to stay so active on offense all the way down to the end with the game on the line, knocking down a clutch three? Just talk about your poise a little bit there. Oh, I, I think it was, I mean, throughout the whole game, my, my teammates were making plays. Torian had a terrific first start to the game. Uh, everybody made big plays, and that just opened up my shot. And, uh, I mean, if they, didn't make, if they didn't make those plays, I wouldn't have been open. So that was a... I give all the credit to my teammates. The Spurs were shooting lights out from three in that first half. Defensively, it seemed like you guys figured some things out in the second. What did you know? Well, I mean, they're, they're a terrific team. We know they're going to play from the I mean, beginning to end, so we knew we had to come out here and uh, play a full game. And so um, they got back in there by hitting those, those tough shots, and uh, we just stuck to, stuck to our game plan and finished it out.
Trey's going to receive a great deal of criticism <laughs> his rookie season. What is the realistic expectation for him? Well, to continue to play his game. Because right now, you, you, you have mixed feelings for him because everyone's expecting him to come in and shoot like he made that last shot tonight <laughs> at the buzzer from the G, which as a shooter, I'm happy for him because I've always been pressing a little bit throughout the preseason. I was able to have a conversation with him before the game saying, hey, he's trying to figure out how to run the offense, get everyone involved. But then again, shoot and shoot. You have to shoot the basketball. That's what you do. So to see a big shot go down like this, one preseason game left, maybe this can get his shot going and maybe this game going. And he can be the Trey Young everybody wants him to be. All right. Well, elsewhere in the Eastern Conference, the Pistons look to avoid a third loss in a row in the preseason, hosting the Wizards in Detroit. Bradley Beal, three off the screen here. He had 17 points in this one. Well, Bradley Beal, you're off to a great start. We all know one thing about him. Stay healthy, the sky's the limit. Andre Drummond with a handoff to Blake Griffin for three. He had 16. Yeah, 16. It's going to be interesting, Kristen, to see how now Blake and, and Drummond have a training camp together. If Mr. Drummond gets an easy layup in his house. 17 points and 20 rebounds. That's in this what he one. does. Gobble, gobble, gobble. John Wall, though, taking over this game, driving for the and one layup. Then Marquise Morris with the steal. Oh, cookies. Wall will find Morris trailing. And the one hand. Oh! Is he's, I think it's safe to say these guys are starting to get loose with one preseason game left. They're starting to get their mojo going. Right. Starting to pick it up the stars with John Wall with 32 tonight and a jump shot stopping him. Popping. Nine assists as well as the Wizards go on to win it. And it's easier and more fun than ever to play NBA Fantasy with weekly lineups and head-to-head -head matchups. Draft your favorite players, compete with friends, and get closer to the game. Play official NBA Fantasy at NBA.com slash play fantasy. And we're back with more game time and more preseason highlights, including Mike Conley in action for the Grizzlies. Don't go away. The Heat would rest six veterans, but still shatter a preseason scoring record. Taking on Anthony Davis and the Pelicans on a Wednesday night. Ian Clark pushing the ball, dumps it off to Julius Randle. Julius Randle, I'm, I'm very excited to see what this young man does with new opportunity. He had 23 points in this one. That was Josh Richardson, who had 25. But Derek Jones Jr. showing off his uh, dunking skills here. Uh, does he do that? Is that what he does? With the left. Oh, that's what he does. <laughs> Bam at a bio driving. He missed the layup, but Ugh. there's Derek Jones Jr. yet again. The put back slam. Yeah, some people have hopes and some people have hops. For <laughs> at the buzzer to end the third, he had 26 points and 12 rebounds. Okay. Jonathan Isaac played just 27 games during his rookie season due to the ankle and foot issues. Despite a sprained ankle last week, DZ, he did return for the Orlando Magic, hosting the Grizzlies in Orlando. Yeah, good to see him back and his, and his running mate Gordon's off to a fast start with all his bouncing around, dunking, doing what he does best. So, yeah. hope this young team can stay healthy as Mike Conley knocks down a jumper. Then Omri Caspi to Conley for a couple of more. He did return for the Orlando Magic, hosting the Grizzlies in Orlando. Yeah, good to see him back and his, and his running mate Gordon's off to a fast start with all his bouncing around, dunking, doing what he does best. So, yeah. hope this young team can stay healthy as Mike Conley knocks down a jumper. Then Omri Caspi to Conley for a couple of more. Ooh, I like the headsy, as they said. Gasol to Conley, this time for the teardrop. Conley had 24 points in this one. Okay, Mike Conley, get healthy, had a good summer, new coach. New faces and see if they can get grit and grind back. DJ Augustine to Jonathan Isaac, who looks like the foot's feeling better. Yes, sir, young fella, stretch out. Isaac, yet again, well, speaking of stretching out, there's the corner three. Hey, he has that in his repertoire, yes, young fella has range. He had 15 points in this one, there's three more. That would put the Magic up 68 to 52, and they'd go on to win it. And the Indiana Pacers conclude their preseason against the Chicago Bulls, a team that's still got one more to go. Zach Levine, though, splitting the defense and the fast break layup here. Mm, so smooth. Happy to see you healthy, young fella. Oh, From yes. Deep. 
Yes, we know you dunk now. Oh, great feet work Get behind that line. Leave that money ball. Later in the first quarter, Jafari Parker pulling up for the jumper. I like to see that. Parker, yet again, this time for the buzzer beating jumper. Well, now we're marking it out what they say six to eight weeks, so now Parker gets extra minutes. That's right. Here's three more. Shooting the ball with confidence. He finished with 11 points. Chicago would lead the way 59 to 41 at the half. Chris Dunn with the steal here in the third, finding Bobby Portis on the fast break. He had 20 more. Man, this young team is going to be very, very interesting. Can Dunn really be that point guard we think he can be and they get healthy? Oh, my Levine. goodness. Pat. Yet oh. again, the slam dunk champion finished with 22 points in the Bulls win. And we've lost a member of the basketball family as former coach Fred Tex Winter died Wednesday. Winter pioneered the triangle offense under Phil Jackson with the Bulls and the Lakers championship teams. The Bulls released this statement. Tex Winter was a basketball legend and perhaps the finest fundamental teacher in the history of our game. He was an innovator who had high standards for how basketball should be played and approached every day. Those of us who were lucky enough to play for him will always respect his devotion to the game of basketball. His contributions to the Bulls organization will always be remembered. Coach Winter was 96 years old.